for some of these the Mexi the migrant labor forces that the way of preserving high culture in their own community is by entering into the lower culture of another community of this proletarian workforce and so um, instead of so again we, we see that um, the preservation of high culture is not in adopting other forms of high culture but in fact in in, in, in in reciprocal uh, manner, it's by adapting low culture. Now, it seems as well there's another kind of cultural phenomena that happens at this point, is that um, what would be frowned upon in Aguilila is accepted because it is the means to a higher end. Um, in Aguilila. Or, so it's accepted now in Redwood, this behavior or someone cleaning who would never clean toilets in Aguilila is now cleaning toilets in, toilets in Redwood. Why? Because it's the means to a higher uh, social class in, in Aguilila. So we see a, a, a difference here. Now, um, the second example um, where we see this um, migrant uh, labor versus uh, migrant uh, capital is that the capital is, of, of course for migrant capital the capital exists first but with migrant la labor the capital is produced afterwards. Um, one requires uh, the presence of the individual the other doesn't. Now um, the 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 interesting point is the um, relationship between uh, higher and lower class um, or sorry uh, yeah again uh, as a class distinction um, but uh, not just uh, culturally uh, upper and lower classes um, but in terms of proletariat and bourgeoisie um, we see that there is uh, a, an identifiable distinction here that of course you know labor is always an effort an element of, of bourgeoisie so it is uh, an identifiable um, difference here in our classic Marxist uh, reading, okay, that uh, one is uh, evident of uh, bourgeoisie. Now, the irony here as well is that it is allowing proletariat to enter into bourgeoisie. So, uh, again, we see this kind of, uh, of, of, of interesting kind of uh, contrast. So this is uh, Roger Rice describes this, uh, or, or at least we see this kind of um, observation. That is a number of efforts of uh, third world uh, trying to bridge the gap between, or, or a number of communities, uh, groups of people trying to bridge the gap between first and third world. Um, and now we we don't just see this with. Uh, um, Mexican, but in all sorts of, of different communities, whether Asian, uh, one example here is Brazilian, um, so a number of different uh, different countries. Now, um, what is interesting though is that we don't see or a lot of the um, transnational uh, elements from more developed cultures don't see the same inversion uh, uh, of, or, or resistance or contrast that I've just been discussing. Um, they see it easier to enter into the higher or bourgeoisie kind of status. Not only that, we don't see a lot of uh, people, um, and just even statistically, we don't see that much migration from these uh, larger um, developed world, uh, d d developed countries, and also a less uh, micro community um, for example uh, a little Canada in America um, we don't see these types of uh, cultural or social phenomena because a lot of the times uh, what allows people to migrate from the more developed countries is, is a higher bourgeoisie success status anyways which allows them to exist and continue uh, or sustain their identity um, within a, a globalized or spaceless uh, dimension and now um, So um, now just to wrap this up, so what we can see, uh, and another final comparison, at least on a globalized scale, is that what we have traditionally seen of this relationship of urban-rural, um, and, and I don't want to equivocate this with uh, center-periphery, but at least the, um, the migration of rural, uh, from rural to urban in the, 
the industrialization and the modernization um, eras that we've, we've discussed in class, um, what we can also see now is that on a globalized scale that we're seeing um, people from not so much rural but third world or less industrialized or industrializing countries going to these more urbanized countries as, as, as uh, industrial centers. So, and again, this effort is uh, there to try to um, uh, bridge the gap between first and third worlds. So, um, that brings us to the end of the article. And I was just, uh, this is a, an interesting uh, article of fleshing out, and we've covered a lot in terms of fleshing out these ideas and the problems of transnationalism, the postmodern dimension of, of, of transnationalism, the spaceless element of transnationalism, the uh, effect of community and the development of community over larger uh, spaces and spaceless uh, air, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, spaceless or geographically uh, spaceless social spaces. Um, pardon the use of space twice. So that brings us to the end of our lecture. I hope I haven't put you to sleep, but of course you've been able to pause at your leisure. So um, please uh, continue on uh, to view the lecture on violence. Um, and that will be the last until the uh, exam review that I will have posted by the end of this week. So hopefully Friday the 18th or 19th of April. Is that right? Maybe it's the 17th. I'm not sure. Um, 2010. So um, enjoy and uh, I hope that helps. Thank you.